Um, welcome everyone to this webinar on um, cork stoppers and their intro interaction with wine. My name is Sam Povey. I am an educator at the WSET School London, and it is my pleasure to welcome um, Albert Edio um, to uh, this webinar uh, this afternoon. Um, today we'll be looking at um, cork stoppers, which are an, uh, I think it's fair to say an underappreciated but very important topic in wine production indeed. Um, I'm going to hand over to Albert in just a second, but before I do, um, if you have any questions during the webinar, please put them in the Q&A box. Um, so that's not the chat, but the Q&A box. Uh, and we'll have some questions in the middle of the webinar and also at the end. So any questions at all into the Q&A. But without further ado, I'll hand over to Albert. Enjoy the webinar. Albert. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sam. Uh, good afternoon. And uh, again, uh, thank you, Sam, for your introduction. Uh, I will also like to thank everybody interested uh, on the webinar. We are delighted to be able to share very briefly the latest uh, trends concerning closures from, from our perspective. And just to clarify, we are using the term closure as a generic term for all stoppers, uh, corks, synthetics, screw caps, and, uh, and others, okay? And uh, in today's one, one hour uh, session, we are going to, to do a quick overview of uh, cork stoppers and other uh, closures and their implications on the evolution of, of wines. In fact, this presentation is, is very similar to the, the one we did recently in, in La Rioja, here in Spain, for the Association of Enologists of the, the La Rioja and, and the University of La Rioja. And uh, our aim for this session is to, to show you the origin and the controls carried out on, on closures, the different types of stoppers, and the aromas of cork and its capacity as an enological tool. And uh, well, before starting directly with the subject, uh, let me explain a little bit uh, who we are. Uh, the Catalan Cork Institute Foundation is a, a non-profit organization whose mission is to promote the cork ecosystem by uh, also promoting the sustainable management of the cork oak uh, forest, uh, the research about cork stoppers, and the contribution to sustainability and, and consumer perception. Here we are, we are a team of uh, eight people. Our budget is funded mainly through the provision of uh, laboratory services, uh, research project contracts and uh, sponsorship uh, contributions from public and private uh, entities. And uh, what's, what's that? <laughs> what is the economy for the common good? The, the ACG is the economic model we follow, which aims to maximize and prioritize the well-being of uh, workers, society, and environment, and also the, the interactions with our uh, stakeholders. Regarding our business units, we mainly focus on three aspects. Uh, the first is, is communication and promotion. In fact, this session is, is an example. In the field of uh, research and development, we, we focus on, on closure wine interaction, uh, mitigation of effects on climate change in the cork uh, forest, and uh, circular economy uh, with uh, cork byproducts. And the third, the, the third working area is our Core Quality Control Laboratory for, for core companies and, and wineries. Uh, here we, we analyze core samples before they are sent to different parts of the world. The US, uh, Chile, Argentina, France, Italy, etc. In fact, uh, about 90% of all cork stoppers in the world are manufactured in the Iberian Peninsula between Spain and Portugal. And uh, some of our customers, uh, who are well-known brands, uh, trust us the, 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 the control of the quality of these cork stoppers before they are shipped to their destination. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, as I told you before, in the, in the field of R&D, we are interested in studying how to improve the cork stoppers. 
through uh, research in order to, to understand the core wine relationship, the detection and elimination of TCA, etc. Uh, in brief, it's about to optimizing these stoppers so that they behave as a analogical tool. And in relation to new applications, we are interested in the use of uh, all pro, uh, cork products. Uh, currently, all cork extracted uh, from the tree that is suitable for the manufacture of uh, stoppers is, is used in that manufacturing. I mean that, uh, for example, when, when natural cork are uh, produced, the, the cork plank is, is perforated, the stopper will follow the next stations of production, but the perforated plank is sold to the technical stopper factory for the production of agglomerated stoppers. The only thing that is not used directly is a part of the, of the cork bar that it ends up being uh, burned for the production of energy in the same factory. We like to say that, the, that we are an example of circular economy. The cork sector is an example of a circular economy because the cork stoppers are also recycled. Mm -hmm. uh, not in all the countries, but uh, in France, uh, Portugal and Spain, most or a part of the, the uh, used cork stoppers are recycled. Uh, four people work in our laboratory carrying out uh, quality controls and expert reports. We also carry out uh, controls of cellar environments, controls in barrels and other physical and chemical biological aspects. And, uh, and that's it, more or less that's uh, who we are. And now let's just start with the, with the basics, with the basics. So what is cork? Hmm? Uh, primarily being the, the Catalan uh, Cork Institute, uh, we are concerned uh, uh, with cork. However, if you have any questions related to other closures and we can answer them, uh, feel free to, to ask uh, to, into, into the text. So the cork is the, the bark is the cork oak. Uh, the, uh, the, the cork is the, the bark of the cork oak. The cork oak is a tree that is very resistant to drought. It, uh, it is adapted to the Mediterranean uh, climate and is uh, mostly found in the areas that are legally protected due to their uh, natural interest and, and high biodiversity. Its uh, sustainable exploitation is fully compatible with uh, legal protection and uh, the first harvest of the tree is carried out when the tree is about uh, 25 30 years old the bark this bark the first bark is is grinded and used mainly in construction for cork boards for for insulation mainly after this uh, first extraction we must wait between 9 and uh, 14 years depending on the territory, for the bark to be thick enough. Uh, this second bark will be removed and it's not used to make uh, corks neither because it's not of uh, sufficient quality. Only from the, the third extraction will it be possible to obtain cork for manufacture of uh, cork stoppers. Okay. And in this uh, slide, we simply reinforce the idea that cork has an internal structure and a very particular chemical composition. And it uh, is what gives it the, the properties of sealing, liquid thickness, uh, thermal and acoustic insulation, as well as what it is related to oxygen transfer, uh, subject that we will see later on. Here, you can see the honeycomb structure, so characteristic of the cork. And these uh, special characteristics make the tree rejuvenate the bark and in turn in increase the, the capture of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere due to this additional growth. <clears throat> there are studies that uh, indicate that cork oak forest in production can fix up to four times more CO2 than a cork oak forest that's not in production. 
So it represents a, a, a special advantage for, for the Cold Cove Forest. And with respect to the global distribution of cork oak forest, uh, I want you to know that the, the cork oak forest is endemic to the Mediterranean basin. I'm aware that there have been some attempts to plant cork oak forest in, in California presently or uh, in Mendoza in Argentina, but they have not been successful because of the characteristics, mainly because of the characteristics of the soil. Okay, uh, now we, we are going to talk about uh, cork stoppers. And uh, here you can see the, the general classification of corks. Uh, this classification is made mainly based on the type of wine to be sealed. Uh, sparkling wines, for, for example, are sealed with wider corks to withstand the pressure and the standard cork is made of agglomerated cork, okay, agglomerated cork with two natural discs at the end. For steel wines, this is for natural cork stopper, uh, we use a 100% cork cylinder. Traditionally, we, we associate these cork stoppers, the, the, the natural and the two disc, with wines that evolve in the bottle due to the uh, contact with natural cork. Uh, these, other, these other cork stoppers are associated with wines with faster consumption in the same year or after one, two years of bottling. Okay. This is a, a, field, uh, a field cork. The field cork is a, a still a natural a stopper, a steadily uh, improved with a layer of cork powder to uh, cover imperfections. The one plus one, uh, this stopper uses uh, two natural discs at the top and at the bottom, uh, as well as cork granules in the middle uh, from crushing remains of the manufacture of natural cork stoppers, okay? And this one, uh, the aglo and microagglomerated uh, cork stoppers uh, are these are um, uh, granulated cork. We can say aglo agglomerated or microagglomerated, depending on the size of the granules. And uh, as I will explain later, the, the the contribution of oxygen and the contact with the natural cork are the main factors according to the latest studies that explain the contribution of cork stoppers to the evolution of wines. No? For these reasons, uh, the stoppers in which there is uh, contact with natural cork are more appreciated. Even so, we are seeing more and more microrelated cork stoppers on the market because their uh, performance has been greatly uh, improved in, in recent times. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that I've been uh, going very quick, but I don't know if you have any questions uh, so far. I think that I'm going very quickly be, uh, to, to get through the boring part, but uh, I think it's important for you to know. Okay, and uh, after uh, some minutes, I think the, the next, uh, after the, the next section, uh, comes the, the controversy and, and the news. So wait to to the end, okay? Okay. Um, Albert, uh, would you like to answer a question from uh, Brian? Yes, maybe, yes, because as I said, I think that we will go on uh, with the boring part. So if you have uh, any questions so far, I am uh, grateful to, to ask something. There are a few questions just coming in. Um, Brian asks uh, if you could maybe elaborate a little bit about the replanting efforts for cork forests at the moment. Yes, uh, that issue. Um, uh, here in the peninsula in Iberia, uh, we have been uh, 
working on, on replanting uh, um, oaks, uh, cork oaks uh, forests. And uh, because we know that here in the peninsula in Iberia, uh, it works. And uh, it has been a lot of efforts about that because the benefits of the cork oak forest, as I said before, the, the protection of the biodiversity or the protection against uh, forest fires, etc. Uh, the cork oak forest has um, uh, a particularity. Uh, the cork bark is a defense uh, against uh, forest fires. So depending the, the, the place, uh, it's very indicated to regenerate the, the forest or plant uh, new forest uh, of cork oaks uh, to fight ag against uh, the increasing uh, forest fires. Uh, and the other experiences of planting in, in the US or, or Mendoza, it's because they have also a Mediterranean climate there, but that experiences uh, made uh, years ago doesn't work. And I think that's the, the reason is, as I said before, is the soil, okay? And more recently, uh, we have been experiencing with um, plantation, intensive plantations of cork forest, but that's only in the phase of investigation, trying to reduce the time between uh, different debarkings, okay? Uh, but uh, we have seen very good uh, results. Uh, so in, we expect uh, the future to, to maybe uh, find ways to reduce that uh, debarking period to maybe uh, five years more or less. But uh, it, it's not, uh, um, um, we, will, we will, won't see that in, in uh, next years, maybe in the, in the next decade. Decade. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. And um, there's another question from um, Fabian, um, who is asking, how is the powder attached um, to a filled cork? Um, and who defines these uh, so-called imperfections as imperfections, um, instead of just having that's the way that the, the, the natural cork looks? Yes, yes. That imperfections are just aesthetically uh so we know from our experience that some wineries don't want that or prefer uh, uh, uh that's this this kind of corks for example without any uh, imperfection that's a very nice uh, cork and uh, in the the others the the, the corks the field corks just have some holes in the middle that, uh, well, that aesthetically doesn't uh, like to do the, the customers. So they use um, food glue uh, to fill that imper uh, these imperfections. So, but well, uh, the thing is that kind of, of uh, cork stoppers, the, the filled ones are cheaper than the, the more aesthetically natural cork stoppers. So. And then finally, we've had a couple of questions um, asking specifically about the effects of climate change on the growing of cork forests. Um, and in particular, Amy would like to know if there are any areas where you expect cork plantation to increase or decrease. Well, in fact, we are Mm, focusing not in, in more plantations, if not in uh, maintain and improve the, the existing plantations because, uh, because of the drought and uh, uh, climate change, uh, we, we see that the forests are suffering and uh, it causes also less production of cork no? in some in some cases for example this year uh, here in catalonia we 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 had a, a decrease in production because of the drought so the thing is to uh, how to manage 
the the cork foils that we have right now here to uh, avoid uh, that kind of problems no? we think that the solution is nor is well not not mainly uh, more plantations if not uh, um, improve the management of the ex existing plantations Fantastic, thank you. I, I am seeing some more co um, questions coming through, but maybe we should uh, leave them for now and um, we can come back to them toward the end of the webinar. Okay, nice. So uh, let's just start with, well, let's continue, sorry, with standardization. Um, okay, there are uh, several national and international regulatory frameworks for, for cork stoppers that provide uh, specifications to, to ensure the proper functioning of cork stoppers. Uh, here are some of these, these frameworks and it's necessary, necessary for, for wineries to know these rules to avoid uh, problems in corking and uh, wine conservation. So uh, we suggest to wineries that if you buy uh, corks to different companies, you have to assure that the cork company is uh, backed uh, by uh, these uh, standards, okay? And here, just to have an idea, here you have a, a list of the most relevant Spanish standards uh, there are more than 20 standards related to cork stoppers. Uh, well, the, the list is in Spanish, but you will see regulations on uh, migration, uh, TCA analysis, uh, sampling, and also regulations related to the, the type of a stopper. No? Specifications for, for natural uh, cork stopper, agglomerate uh, cork stopper, microagglomerate cork stopper, etc. And uh, in fact, right now, these, these days, we are uh, now coordinating two new uh, standards. Uh, the first one is, is carbon footprint, and the other is, uh, is oxygen permeability determination method. So one, uh, in fact, two standards of method, the, the first uh, CO2 um, uh, footprint and the other uh, OTR or oxygen transfer rate uh, determination. Uh, here are some of the physical analysis we do in, in our laboratory. Also, we can, uh, well, here also, uh, you have the microbiological and chemical test to verify the absence of microorganisms as well as the absence of, uh, of flavors. And here uh, you have the sensory test that uh, we will do, uh, that we do uh, with the tasting uh, panel. The idea is to detect if uh, there is any particular aroma that's not of uh, interest. Uh, we will see the aromas uh, in a moment, okay? And uh, I don't know if I explained this before, but the, the other closures, uh, part of the, the cork stoppers, do not have these uh, specifications. And uh, in any case, they, they must comply with the regulations of uh, plastic materials in contact with food. Um, but they do not, do not have uh, specifications such as extraction forces, uh, torsion, uh, alonisols, uh, TCA, etc. Uh, I am telling you this because, in fact, we also control the presence of TCA in batches of uh, screw caps, uh, for example, for some uh, for some wineries. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, when uh, referring to aromas, we like to explain that that cork has aromas shared with, with wine. Uh, some may be good and others are considered uh, less good or directly bad. Uh, even so, there are some cases of wineries that appreciate, for example, certain mushroom aromas in France, I remember that, uh, that example, or some moist soil uh, aromas here in Catalonia. So it's difficult 
sometimes it's difficult to say that that's a good aroma or a bad aroma. No? So uh, sometimes depend on the, the, the customer or the winery. The, it's true that other aromas are uh, especially bad or especially good, but um, not, not, it's not uh, so easy. Like the barrels, uh, which uh, provide aromas in the evolution of wine, the cork in much, much less quantity due to the, the small contact uh, surface, we can uh, incorporate some of these aromas into, into the wine. Mm -hmm. Certainly, cork companies uh, try to produce uh, a sensorily neutral stopper, uh, especially in negative aromas, but we think that we must understand that cork is a natural product and it has its peculiarities as a result of the years it has been growing in the in the forest okay and a part of the aromas uh, i'm also pointing out some some myths about cork uh, here in the presentation that i would like to discuss or or, or share with you uh for example th this one uh, one one um, myth that uh, we try to avoid is, is talking about uh, cork taint or cork contamination when we mean uh, tca or or musty smell why because because the defect is not ex exclusive to cork tca can be uh, in the in wine due to contamination in the barrels or uh, because of cleaning with uh, detergents or uh, the use of chlorine paints, uh, wooden pallets, etc. The problem with TCA is not uh, so much that someone detects it, uh, which is difficult at, at low concentrations, but rather that it masks the original sensory profile of, of the wine. In fact, the, the incidence of TCA in stoppers has dropped a lot due to the new technology used by core companies. Technology focused on detection and also uh, elimination. And here is something that uh, we like to share uh, I give you an example of a project we are working on. This bottle is, uh, well, the bottle and the winery, uh, the winery is, is uh, Recaredo. Uh, this is a Corpinat, not a, not a Cava. Uh, Corpinat is a Spanish sparkling wine. Uh, and it comes, as I said, uh, from the Spanish winery Recaredo that uh, does the second fermentation in a bottle with a cork closure. Uh, as you, you know, uh, usually the, the wineries use a, a crown cap, but this one does not. Uh, they produce all their sparkling wines this way, and they appreciate the aromas and the special evolution that uh, the wines sealed with cork make. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, at the end of the maduration, this stopper is replaced by the shipping stopper and uh, and also this this stopper is recycled by by us so that's a example of uh, how um, i think more and more wineries are appreciating uh, what uh, the core can do for their wines and for the evolution of their wines you can search uh, the project on on internet uh, and well, uh, after the aromas, uh, this section in this section I, I will give you several tips on bottling, transport, and storage of bottles by wineries. I think it's a, a part uh, that I'm going to pass maybe quickly because uh, we are running out of time, uh, and also in in some ways could could seem boring, but. Uh, the idea is, uh, or the idea that I want to send is the importance of this phase more uh, than its details. Mm -hmm. uh, just to 
to keep in mind, and it's precisely a topic that we, we talked about, about uh, recently with, uh, with a professor of enology in, in La Rioja, that uh, winemakers know how to make wines, but uh, they have not been trained with the details of bottling, even though it is a critical phase to keep, to keep the, the wine in, in good condition. So for us, it's especially important to, uh, to share with you, uh, not, as I said, not the details, but the fact, okay. <clears throat> for a good bottling process, it's necessary to take into account the, the quality control of the closures and the compliance with the specifications of the bottles. So two, two things, the, the, the stoppers and the, both, the bottles. In the case of the bottles, especially with the, the bottlenecks. And it's also very important, the good maintenance of the jaws that compress the cork, the insertion into the bottleneck and the good maintenance uh, of the equipment in, in general. This information, uh, you, well, you, you will have that presentation, the video, and uh, we can share with you the, the specifics of uh, this process. The storage conditions are also very relevant to avoid problems. <clears throat> uh, humidity and temperature conditions are important to avoid the expansion of the liquid and premature oxygen problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, this leads me to, to explain that we know about the position of the bottles. Another myth, uh, before I, I'll talk about uh, the, the TCA and or the, the cork tain. And uh, now we will talk about the position of the bottles. Uh, in the past, the, the vertical or horizontal storage of bottles of a steel wine, in this case a steel wine, uh, was regarded as a variable to control the ingress of oxygen into the bottles. But recent studies tend to minimize the impact of the position of the bottles on the, on the evolution of the wine as uh, the concerns on the elasticity of the cork. Because the, the head space is uh, saturated with humidity, which is transferred to the cork, so the cork uh, drilling out is not the problem. So, in conclusion, uh, the, the position is not so important for the issue of oxygenation, but is uh, important in the aspect of transference of polyphenols and tannins from the cork to the wine. Uh, we will see that uh, later on. But that's the th second myth that uh, we, we would like to, to share with you and we can comment uh, at the end. Uh, transportation. Uh, transportation is, is equivalent to a storage. You have to think that wines travel all over the world in containers that uh, are not always uh, well refrigerated and can spend uh, many days at sea traveling across the equator at temperatures around 40 degrees and uh, so in the container maybe the, the if it's not well refrigerated the temperature could uh, uh, go around 50 degrees so imagine the uh, how it can affect the, the wine into the bottle and uh, well, uh, to finish, one, one of the topics that uh, we decided to talk about today, uh, talking about innovation or the latest uh, knowledge, uh, is precisely the, the OTR, the oxygen transfer rate through the closure. Um, it's, it's considered that it's the main factor that explains the maturation of wines into the bottle, since uh, it intervenes in the oxidation and reduction reactions that uh, generate increasingly complex aromas and, and flavors uh, into the wine. Okay. Uh, at the Institute, 
and our foundations. We have been uh, working on it for a few years now uh, with different projects. Um, first, to select the best measurement methods and then to understand the behavior of the stopper and the variables that affect the OTR. Okay. We can go ag again on the specifics at the end. And uh, before I quickly explain the, the conclusions of uh, these several studies, just keep in mind the relative importance of OTR after bottling. Okay. Uh, here is the phase of um, nano oxygenation, the, the oxygen that uh, goes through the, the stopper. And that's the uh, amount or concentration or quantity of oxygen that can be uh, dissolved solve into the wine no? in the, the previous phases. So it's just a remark that these phases are the, um, the important phases, okay, to control because you, you can add a lot of oxygen. And this one is important if the other phases are uh, being uh, has been um, perfectly controlled, okay. Uh, in our studies, we have verified several things. Here, I uh, we we put uh, the, the main ideas, six main ideas. The first one, uh, by tightly covering the stopper with wax and plastic. We have verified that the, in a vacuum bottle, uh, the oxygen increases. So how is that? We attribute to, uh, this to the fact that the cork is mostly air, which is expelled after the uh, compression to introduce it, it into the bottle. Okay, that's one of the, the main ideas. So the oxygen comes from the cork stopper, not the exterior. Second one, uh, when providing OTR values of different closures, the analysis method uh, must be known since uh, depending on the method, the results are different and difficult to, to compare. Okay, that's important for, for the wineries. The third one, oxaluminescence, is the method that we believe to be easiest, uh, more accurate and reproducible. That's a technical method. Uh, as I said before, if this the, the, the fourth one is as I said before, if bottling is not well controlled, the the OTR doesn't matter uh, once the bottle is closed. So it's important to take into account the previous uh, phases of bottling. Uh, next one, the position of the bottle does not seem to to affect the OTR. But we believe that the transfer of polyphenols and tannins can vary the taste. And we have verified it, this together with the winery. It's something that we have to do more tests, but everything indicates that the tannins and polyphenols have a, a positive effect uh, by the, the cork stopper. And lastly, we have verified that the OTR is the parameter that we understand to be the most important in the cork wine relationship. Okay, so it's important to define the OTR of the cork when you uh, buy it or produce it. Okay, for example, right there, uh, I hear that's a, a, a real case. Uh, uh, and in this this real case, uh, we present the amount of uh, total oxygen uh, solved in in a bottles in a bottling line in a winery. So imagine you st start to bottling uh, in the morning, and uh, you finish at the end of the day. Okay, so. Uh, well, given the importance of the oxygen input, we might imagine that this should be constant, okay? 
but, but it is not. So you can imagine the problems with that. Uh, we are, we, are uh, uh, we know that the OTR, the oxygen is the main factor but the control of the OTR or the control of the oxygen increase, sorry, the control of the oxygen uh, um, uh, input uh, is not uh, so good as you can see, okay. And here, see, uh, well, that's in, in Spanish, but I will translate. We see that it, uh, it changed due to boiling conditions at the beginning we see uh, much more oxygen, okay, at the beginning. Uh, then maintenance tasks are uh, carried out here, these two maintenance tasks. Then we have lunch time here, okay, lunch time of the people that working on the, the line. And uh, at the end, uh, here we don't know what happened, but at the end, uh, always more oxygen uh, is is, uh, uh, is solved into the bottom because uh, the increase in air entry in the canals, okay, because uh, we are f finishing the the, the process, uh, and that that these variations of uh, oxygen concentration into the bottles uh, may explain the random oxidation phenomena that we find in, in some bottles, okay? So uh, the idea is we have to control that, the OTR, the OTR is very important, the cork stoppers has to have a, a, a specific OTR, et cetera, et cetera. But if we do not control very well the bottling process and the previous phases, all, uh, the cork stopper doesn't, doesn't matter, okay? And uh, well, that's it, more or less, I think uh, we meet the time. Uh, let me, before I, I say goodbye and, and, and answer the questions, I suggest you to visit the Surupedia here, uh, the Surupedia webpage. Uh, we have uh, questions and answers about uh, cork. And uh, well, uh, we are in touch for, for whatever you need. And uh, I think it's time for more questions. Um, thank you very much, Albert. Um, we've got quite a few questions. Um, we may not have time to answer all of them, but let's see how it goes. So we've had a couple of questions, um, just asking for a little bit more detail on the steps that cork producers and wineries can take to limit the risk of TCA um, contamination in corks? Okay, well that's important. In, in these days I would say the, that the cork producers, uh, most of them uh, has the CISTE code, code standard so if you work on a winery, please check if your provider of corks has this, that certification. When you have the sister code standard, it means that you follow the best practices on uh, cork stopper production. These be uh, best practices uh, means that they follow, well, all the um, procedures, uh, um, substance, they use all the substances, et cetera, et cetera, to minimize uh, the contamination with uh, TCA. So uh, they, they used to have a lot of controls of uh, wood, uh, plastics, uh, et cetera. They tend not to use, for example, wooden pellets or wooden structure. It's difficult to, to find a wooden structure in a cork stopper factory. So they are, I think that they are very aware of that problem. Uh, but sometimes you can find TCA, TCA randomly in a, in, a, in a cork stopper because it comes from the forest and it's not easy always to, to find them. 
And uh, in the case of uh, wineries, uh, as I said before, you have to control the, the pintings. You cannot use uh, uh, products or chloride products. You have to avoid the, the chloride products uh, in paintings or uh, washing the, infra uh, the infrastructure or, or, or the winery. And, um, and well, uh, you have to control uh, also from time to time the wooden structures and the barrels uh, I would say I will suggest at least uh, two times a, a year you can uh, check this you know, you, for example in our laboratory we do that controls for wineries and for barrel producers so you have to ch uh, check that uh, the, 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 do that analyze to verify that uh, you mainly the, the wood uh, has an uh, TCA. So I would say that that are the, the main suggestions. Uh, we, we have a, a guide um, about that for the, the, the best practices in wineries and cork stopper producers. And uh, maybe some uh, we can share with you the link uh, of that guide where, where you can find a lot more information about that. Thank you very much. Um, the next question comes from Hannah. To what extent are the cork quality control checks automated versus being undertaken manually by humans? Yes. Um, well, it's not easy in, uh, in a production line uh, to do all the, the control checks. Main of the controls are about uh, dimension, uh, weight, and uh, uh, imperfections at the end interior of the cork stopper. With X uh, rays, you can uh, you can see in the interior. So um, there are a lot of this this kind of uh, quality controls in line. But on the other side, uh, it's true also that not all the cork stopper pro producers have the technology to uh, uh, to control um, that, for example, the aromas or the TCA in a, in a, in a continuum in a line in a production line. Uh, for example, you know maybe you know. Uh, some corp uh, big cork producers that have uh, uh, controls uh, of TCA, for example, of each stopper, but not all the, the cork uh, stopper producers has that technology. But uh, it's a technology that is uh, uh, more and more used. So I think in a near future, uh, most of the cork stopper producers will have that technology. Yeah? But on the other side, um, uh, is is I would say that's very common that very common or ad, almost all the uh, the cork stopper producers has uh, their own laboratory with they uh, do uh, the quality controls of uh, each batch. Uh, they take uh, samples of each byte to do the quality controls and also they have uh, laboratories like us where they uh, send uh, 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 a batch uh, uh, of uh, uh, stoppers okay to verify to the the the, uh, the, um, the controls and uh, uh, the, the, the specifications of these stoppers uh, previously to send it to the to the customers to the wineries. So uh, it's true that's not easy, but uh, I would say that uh, most of the cork stopper producers has uh, the technology and the resources to to uh, double check the cork stoppers. Yeah. 
I see. Thank you very much. Um, and then there's been quite a few questions about around um, the the storage of bottles. Um, and I know you mentioned earlier that there were some uh, potential advantages to keeping the wine um, on its side uh, horizontally. Um, so a couple of people asking whether or not it is indeed the case that wine should be stored on its side, particularly this idea of keeping the cork moist um, to, to prevent it from drying out. Uh, and also a couple of people asking um, about um, how to store wine where you have used the Coravan um, to extract some of the wine through the cork. And if if you happen to know how best to, to store a wine once once that cork has been um, been pierced. Okay. Well, the first uh, question, um, uh, well, as I said, the, 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 the last uh, research tell us that doesn't matter if the, well, doesn't matter at least for uh, the, the drying of the cork, uh, if you store it horizontal or vertical. Uh, if you store it uh, horizontal, the um, humidity of the head space is enough to maintain uh, moist the cork and not to uh, cause any problem. The other thing is that uh, when you store the, the, the bottle during a lot of time and uh, you want to, uh, well, evolve uh, the, the, the wine, uh, some studies and in our experience we see that there is a, a interaction be, between the, the, the cork and wine uh, as I said uh, again uh, tannins and polyphenols that these two compounds are antioxidants and with the uh, liberation of these uh, compounds uh, well, it prevents the premature oxidation of the wine and uh, allows the evolution of this wine during a uh, lot of time. So if you, if I have to suggest something, I will suggest to, to put uh, bottles horizontally uh, because that contact, okay? And sorry, the other question, I don't remember. The other question, the other question was a couple of people just asking um, if you knew uh, how is best to store a wine once it has been caravaned? What do you mean, caravaned? Uh, so so if, if someone has used a caravan uh, to... to ah, okay, okay, okay. The, the I'm so sorry. I'm not, uh, I haven't got the information to suggest that, uh, to to answer that question but uh well i um, i will use more or less the same answer than uh, than uh, before absolutely there's no problem at all um we've got a few more questions uh, and still a little bit of time um so we have a question here from um Oh, wait, sorry, let's find it here. There we go, from Roger Pinder. Um, so Roger asks, um, screw cap is gaining ground, especially in the global south. Um, what are some of the relative advantages and disadvantages of screw caps versus cork? Well, in our view, uh, is uh, in our view, the advantage, advantage and disadvantages are sustainability. It's true that uh, screw caps are made by aluminium. Most of them has aluminium and plastic, so that's diff uh, difficult to, to recycle, to separate and recycle. And uh, on the contrary, the cork stopper is completely recyclable and sustainable. And uh, in my view, and, and I know that that's a view that it's not shared, uh, maybe, or not understood uh, um, away from the, the cork sector, is that the cork sector is, is a regenerative um, example. So uh, let me try to explain that. Um, when we use a cork stopper, we are 
positively contribu contributing to the environment. So, uh, and that's not the case of uh, the screw caps or synthetic caps. Uh, the synthetic and, and the screw caps are, uh, you need aluminum, you need uh, minerals, you need to, to extract it from the earth. And in the case of cork stoppers, you just need uh, a cork, uh, cork oak uh, forest and uh, you need to manage that cork oak uh, forest and uh, when you use that cork, you have to manage the, the forest and then with that sustainable management, you contribute uh, to the maintenance of that ecosystem. Uh, so using uh, cork stoppers, you contribute, contribute to the maintenance of a, a very valuable ecosystem. So for us, that's the main idea a part of enological or uh, things, you know? uh, because we say that screw caps, uh, this, the, the OTR of the screw caps usually is less than the oxygen transfer of the cork stoppers. So uh, we say that the, the, the screw caps tend to reduce the wine. So, these two factors are our answers to 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 that uh, to the screw caps and synthetic caps. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and then an, another question from from Hannah um, asking how much it costs to produce the different types of cork that you have outlined. Uh, well, I don't know if the the question is the, the, the price of a cork or because also as the forest, the uh, uh, the cork sector is a factory, uh, sorry, is, is ecosystem, not a factory. The, the factories are a, a, an ecosystem. You, you can find a cork, natural cork stop uh, factory and near near that uh, cork stopper factory natural cork stopper factory you have a, a technical cork stopper factory that uses the material that uh, that uh, is uh, is not used by the natural cork stopper factory and then uh, uh, the material not used for the technical cork stopper factory is used for another company that uh, produces uh, uh, insulation cork panels. So the difficulty of the production or the cost of the production is is uh, about the the uh, the whole ecosystem. Uh, I don't know. I'm explaining well that, uh, but uh, the answer is not uh, the cost of, of the price of one stopper. If not, it depends of uh, the, the amount of cork or the companies uh, related uh, to the different uh, cork stoppers. So it's difficult to say that it's, it costs much more than the others uh, because uh, all cork stoppers has their uh, particularities and uh, you have to have a lot of knowledge, a lot of history. Uh, in fact, most of the cork uh, stopper factories has maybe 50 or hundreds of years. It's common to, to find cork stopper companies with more than 100 year, years of history. Uh, so it's a knowledge difficult to share, but because it's very specific and uh, you have to know very well the material you you have to be aware uh, uh, the, the, the which kind of cork you you buy uh, to into the forest so well it's not easy to 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 answer that question but it just to try to to share with you or to explain that uh, the the cork sector is, is like an ecosystem. So, uh, and it's difficult, it's difficult to, 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 to say uh, if uh, the production of one cork, uh, one 
kind of cork is different or more difficult than another kind of cork. That's entirely understandable. Thank you. And I think we've got time for just one more question. Um, and this is a question from Stirl, um, who, who recently pulled a, a DM10 cork out of a bottle of young Chablis. Um, does this indicate that the wine producer believes the wine is capable of bottle aging for at least a decade? Uh, well, that's uh, that's the idea. Uh, the thing is, the M10 is a, a, a core producer, uh, and I'm not able to answer uh, in the name of one producer, no. But their idea is 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 that, uh, and as far as I know, that's what they uh, tend no. But the thing is, I would return to the idea of OTR. When they say that, it means that uh, there is some kind of control of OTR uh, of the cork stopper. So depending of, uh, on the OTR, uh, if it releases more or less uh, oxygen, it means that you can maintain the, the wine during more or less years so it's a, an example of the importance of uh, the oxygen transfer rate because of that uh, different companies different uh, cork stopper producers uh, qualifies their stoppers in terms of otr okay so returning to the questions uh, uh, that kind of uh, course stopper that you mentioned uh, means that they control in some way uh, that OTR and they said that uh, with that OTR means that you can uh, use that uh, cork in that bottle in uh, that specific length of time. Fantastic, thank you. Um, that is about our time for today, unfortunately. Um, if you would like to recap any of the information covered in this seminar, it will, or this webinar rather, it will be available uh, on YouTube in the next couple of days. Uh, so please do go over to YouTube for that. Uh, but then it just remains for me to uh, thank firstly Albert for sharing his knowledge of all things Cork with us today. And of course, thank you to everyone who came along to join us. Uh, I hope you have a lovely morning, afternoon or evening, and we'll hope to see you at an event or webinar in the near future. Thank you everyone and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.